The great Italian-born physicist Enrico Fermi once asked some colleagues he was having lunch with the question, where are they? Referring not to some absent guests, but to the absence of any signs of extraterrestrial intelligences. This absence puzzled him, and his question later became known as the Fermi's paradox. So far, I have been focusing on the simplest and most straightforward answer to Fermi's paradox. We haven't seen any aliens, because there aren't any around. Not the most thrilling repost, and perhaps for that reason people have busied themselves concocting more fanciful explanations. One might speculate that the reason why we haven't seen any extraterrestrial civilizations is not because there aren't any, but because they are invisible. Maybe there is a secret society of advanced civilizations that know about us but have decided not to contact us until we're mature enough to be admitted into their club. Perhaps they're observing us like animals in a zoo. However, I don't think this is likely. On Earth, life has spread to every nook and cranny that can support it. Life goes wherever it can, and that includes the galaxy. So, should any civilization reach the requisite stage of technological ability, it would most likely attempt to colonize space. Even if some advanced civilizations decided permanently to forego space colonization, this would only hand the initiative to some other, more intrepid civilization. It only takes one match to start a fire, and it only takes one expansionist civilization to launch the colonization of the universe. As for the feasibility of space colonization, even we humble humans can already identify technologies that would enable us to spread into space, such as nanotechnology, artificial intelligence and robotics. So why haven't we seen one? By far the simplest, and in my opinion the likeliest explanation, is that there aren't any at least not in our galaxy. And that means no advanced alien races either. If, as I hope is the case, we are the only intelligent species that have ever evolved in our galaxy, and perhaps in the entire observable universe, it does not follow that our survival is not in danger. Nothing in the above reasoning precludes the great filter from being located both behind us and ahead of us. It might both be extremely improbable that intelligent life should arise on any given planet and very improbable that intelligent life, once evolved, should succeed in becoming advanced enough to colonize space. But we would have some grounds for hope that all or most of the great filter is in our past if Mars is indeed found to be barren. In that case, we may have a significant chance if we play our cards right of one day growing into something almost unimaginably greater than we are today. In this scenario, the entire history of humankind to date is a mere instant compared to the eons of history that lies still before us. All the triumphs and tribulations of the millions of people that have walked the earth since ancient civilization of Mesopotamia would be like mere birth pangs in the delivery process of a kind of life that hasn't really yet begun. Because surely, with the transformative technologies already in sight, genetics, nanotechnology and so on, and with millions of years to perfect and apply these technologies and others that we haven't yet conceived of, we will develop into some kind of post-human existence. Imagine the tremendous responsibility of those who find themselves present and called upon to midwife the conception of such a future. And that is where we are, you and me.